Hey, I'm J.D. Adams. I'm an uh, orthopedic traumatologist in Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, today we'll be talking about the calcaneal fracture ORIF with the Arthrex perimeter plate. Clinical history is a 55-year-old uh, welder by trade. He actually fell out of a tree and presented to me about two weeks later. Uh, he's healthy, uh, non-smoker, and as you can see on the x-rays on the right here, he's got a depressed comminuted calcaneus fracture. And so I sent him for a CT scan. This is a uh, representative sagittal cut of the CT scan, and what you can see is the depressed fragment, and then also pick up the intraarticular fragment there, and we can roll back through uh, the other side, or coming back from the other side uh, to see it there, and then a coronal view sees the uh, intraarticular split in the posterior facet, and then medial comminution as well. The reason I felt like this was uh, surgical was one, the patient was healthy, non-smoking, he's an active patient, but also uh, it was a depressed calcaneal fracture with loss of Bowler's angle with a split in the posterior facet with angulation and gapping of the articular surface. And so the plan in, in this case for me, two weeks after injury with this type of fracture, this is an extensile lateral approach and I really like using the perimeter plate in this setting. And so, as you know, the first step uh, is usually trying to obtain reduction. What I've found is that probably the most successful thing is to get the tuberosity in the right position so that you can get the posterior facet in the right position. Sometimes I'll do it in the other order, but in this case I've moved the tuberosity in the correct position, pinned it in place with a medial strut that I eventually put place a cannulated screw and then obtained my reduction of the posterior facet. You can see a K-wire in that, uh, the posterior facet maintaining that reduction. Usually I'll fix the posterior facet with a, some type of lag screw. In this case, I used a 2.7 millimeter lag screw. And then a lot of times what I'll do is actually replace the K-wire that I put initially with another screw. For instance, you can use a, like a 1.6 millimeter K-wire and potentially switch that out to like an Arthrex 2.4 millimeter screw. Uh, and you can see the cannulated screw that I also put along the medial column there to maintain that alignment in the Harris Hill view. Next step after I've got that reduction provisionally held, lag screw fixation of the posterior facet, that's when I'm gonna start applying my plate. And here's the image after I've placed the plate. This is after three months, uh, this patient did really well. He's back to work part-time at uh, three months, minimal pain, certainly had some edema, but that was resolving. And so, one of the things that I really like about this plate, and I want to kind of go through, there's quite a few different benefits to it. Uh, probably the first thing that jumps out is that you know, not every calcaneus is the same size. And one of the nice things is there's four different size options. A lot of times you can, you, you'll be able to find one that fits exactly your patient for the most part. And if it doesn't fit exactly, these, these holes are actually pretty easy to trim off with a, a regular wire cutter. Other thing is, is it's low profile. So it's 1.35 millimeter in thickness. It's really malleable, it's easy to contour. And one of the things that's really nice, the way I fix calcaneous fractures is provisional fixation first, get my reduction. And a really beefy plate can sometimes, you get a reduction and by the time you've placed non-locking screws and you've, you've put the plate, it can potentially mess up your reduction. And I found that the, the fact that this plate's malleable is really nice because it doesn't overpower that provisional fixation. And then the multiple screw options are really nice. I find the oblong hole really beneficial because I can put a screw there and if I need to adjust the plate up or down along the posterior facet, that helps. And then this other screw that has the tab where you can bend it over the tuberosity, I found that really helpful as well. The in situ bending nature of the plate, because it's malleable, makes it really easy to contour as you've, once you've already got the plate on. Sometimes it's difficult if the plate's not malleable or if you don't have instruments to allow you to to do in situ bending. This works really nicely. And then if you've already gotten provisional fixation or lag screw fixation specifically in your posterior facet, the, if you wanna use locking technology, the ability to use variable angle locking and shoot around those independent lag screws is really beneficial. And so, as we all know, probably the uh, biggest thing with calcaneus fractures is that you want to use excellent soft tissue handling techniques. For me, it's reduced the fracture prior to plating and then strategic use of non-locking screws. So the nice thing about this plate is that it does contour to most patients, but if it's not perfectly contoured, sometimes you can use non-locking screws to fine tune your reduction, or you gotta be smart and 
maybe use locking screws to prevent a malreduction by using non-locking screws. Uh, the other thing I think is really beneficial is the low profile nature of the plate and it's malleable. And then if you do feel like you need fixed angle screws going from lateral to medial, these variable angle screws are really beneficial and that gives you at least a lot more fixation in the tuberosity to prevent it from going uh, proximal and losing bowler's angle that you've obtained at surgery.